Alrighty, what is up guys? Happy New Year. Um, it's 2022. 2021 is over. Like, there will never be another day in 2021. Um, I don't know if that blows your mind. It blows mine. Time is, uh, time is weird when you think about it. But anyway, I digress. Um, didn't do a November recap. Took a break. We're back. We're going to do December recap. And then we're going to look at 2021 overall. Um, it's going to be pretty broad. I'm not going to go into, at least for 2020, any specific trades. I mean, that's pretty much why all my other previous monthly recaps is here. That's what they're for. Um, but again, we're going to go over just the broad view, what I think about it, um, what it might mean for 2022, um, and just how I even, how I like just got to this point, right? Because um, it's easy to see like this kid, this guy made, you know, 2 million on the year. Like how, how on earth, how on earth did I get this point? Because it's pretty, it's pretty crazy. Um you know, and it takes time. So we're going to go over that later as well. Well, let's just get right into it. Let's just start with the December recap. Um, you know, 82 grand, awesome month. However, if you could just, if I could like not know what my PNL is for, for December and just like take a snapshot of December's action and ask myself, how much do I think I'm up? Um, I would say a few grand to break even. I mean, I really did not feel like, um, I was making progress, even though numerically speaking, like Duh, I, I finished up 82 grand. Um, and the reason why I feel that way is just because December, for those who have been around trading for a few years, like the seasonality behind September um, is usually like the precursor to the hottest market of the year, which is like January, February, March, right? December, the winter months, December through really kind of early March, have typically been in previous years like the hottest time to make money in the markets, right? Like you can take off August, you can take off the fall, maybe even take off the summer months, like sell and may go away kind of saying. Um, but December through March is like the time to make the most money out of the year or out of the out of your trading career during during a 12 month rolling period. Um, you know, we did not we did not get that action this month. Um, there was not really a hot sector by any means. There was not any multiple runners by any means. Um, in many ways, I, I, I came out ahead like I did because I just had a few good setups in my arsenal that did come up and I was able to execute on them and then make 80 grand, like literally four days. I mean, really, I can show you right here. These four days, the, the first, the third, the 14th and the 27th were my only five figure days of the whole month. And if you added up just the, you know, obviously if you added all these four days up, it doesn't lead to 80 grand. But if you add up the gains that created these days, because there are some losses in some of those days, if you just added the biggest gains of the month, they lead to 80 grand. Like just, it was just four trades, four theses, four stocks, um, turned to 80 grand. So I could have taken off every other day. I mean, all these small little losses, um, all these small little wins, you know, of course I'm there, I'm, I'm at the market every day and I have to take those trades to see if they're gonna work. You know, I didn't know like these four trades that I took were going to be the biggest winners. So that's why I took them. But it's just like, it's just the point of like less is more. And when you see the ideal setups like you do, which I did in these cases, and I did take the slightly bigger size because I knew they were good. It turned out that those four were my entire month, really, um, in hindsight. But there's something to be said about it, that that's usually how trading goes in many, many ways. And the better and more efficient you can be at doing that. Um, gives you a result like this. So even in a, in a crappier, um, uneventful December market, I'm still able to come out with a really, really great month like this because all I really do need is four days out of the 20 days in the, in the month or whatever it is. Um, so we'll go over those four trades in detail. Um, we're not gonna go any over any specific losses and I'll, I'll tell you why that is at the end because they just, they were uneventful. Like I said, December was uneventful. The only thing eventful about December for me was these big wins, the small losses. I mean, I did, I guess I'll just go over right now. Um, you know, my biggest loss being $3,500 on the month, um, I'm super happy about. Like, I don't think, I, I think every other month throughout this year, I've always had it close to a five-figure loss, if not over a five-figure loss, just because, you know, when you size up on bigger setups or you try to be aggressive in a hotter market, like those bigger losses do happen and come along with with doing that. Um, this market, I, I quickly recognized that December was not going to be something as hot, was not going to be something like previous Decembers have been. And I just, and I wish I could like, tell you how I knew or how I felt about it, but it just, it just experienced. And I immediately knew that. And I immediately felt it like, I'm like, there's this market's different. Um, and I sized down tremendously on a lot of things that I just didn't think were ideal. Um, so the fact that my average loss is only 1700 and my biggest loss is 3,500, like that's, that's way sized down to what I'm typically used to. Like I will typically take it to average loss of like four or five grand. And I didn't even take one loss that big this whole month. So just one of those things where like a lot of these losses I took, were just such scratch trades, such small like starter positions on so many of these 
there there wasn't really they're just again uneventful. The best word I can think is uneventful. Um, and the most eventful thing was you know these four trades that I was able to pull out eighty grand from. So we'll go right into those. Um, and it's pretty unique. Each one is a different setup, and I'll touch on this at the end. Um, so yeah, I'll get to the end, but I just want to say to preview it, like all of them were different setups, which I found really interesting. So um, in the very beginning of the month, beginning of the month, A E R C. Um, unfortunately, I don't have access. I, I guess I could go to. A, I guess I could custom it. This is on the the thirtieth. So this was the end of November, going into December, and you know if you've seen tickers like this, you know unfortunately there's a few other there's a few other tickers that have done this. Um, they're not on the top of my head right now, but a lot of these there's a trend where a newer company will come public. Uh, many are usually Chinese, like kind of um, pump and dumps, like the more modern day pump and dumps or promotions. Um, and these insiders have shares from very very low prices. Um, it's a usually like a liquid run up and then just destruction. I actually think. Uh, HUDI was one, or was one of the recent ones, if we look at it. Um, let's go. Kind of similar. I mean, it had some hard red days, but it was very similar in the manner of like, it had this liquid run up and then huge harsh red days. I mean, I think this one was a harsh red day. This is not a, a misprint. This was a hard wick that sold off. Um, but anyway, AERC is one like it, um, a little more extreme. Pretty much was down like 80% of the day. I did not short any of this. You know, I hate, I hate in many ways chasing. Um, and so many times I would think I'm like, oh, I'm gonna short at 50, but what if it bounced? And then it goes to 40. I'm like, what if I short at 40 and it bounced, but it doesn't, and it just keeps fading and fading and fading. Um, so I'm never good at timing this dump, and I've never really taken part of it. But once it happens, I do know from a history of seeing these, they usually don't recover at all. Um, Huddy wasn't really good, at, or HUDI wasn't a good example. Um, but this one I knew was one that was just getting beaten down and wasn't gonna really recover. And so when it bounced, I thought to myself like. You know, an overnight short, if, if I was up on my position, if I had a good cushion, um, could be a good swing short into December to start this, this month off right. Um, and so I actually have my trades here. Uh, again, like I said, didn't short any of this, but didn't start, then started shorting into this bounce once it got over view up. Um, started covering, taking pieces off, to lock some profits in. But then I decided to hold the rest overnight. And it looked pretty good because it started fading. Uh, the next day, unfortunately I don't have the, or I can do custom again. Let's go to the first. Um, the next day, same thing with my trades here, uh, covered into the morning weakness, which is great. However, I had, I think, way too much size left. I think I had to believe at least half, if not more, of my size still left. Um, and I just did not expect this straight up bounce. So, I mean, literally, like, it looks like 15 green candles in a row. Um, and as you can see, it ended up going red-green. When it went red-green, I'm like, no. Like, again, even though I said I wasn't chasing in terms of the actual dump and I waited for a bounce, the reality is this thing is still down like 70, 80% from, from its initial highs. So, you know, I don't call it chasing in the short term, but in the long term, this thing could have a bigger bounce. You can't deny that op or that, uh, that, that being an up or that being, um, that, that, out that, that, that outcome happening. Right. So when we, when it was going green, I'm like, no, I, I'm not going to get squeezed. That is not going to happen. So I covered, of course you could see it immediately failed. And when I saw that happening, I'm like, okay, I got squeezed. It's all right. I made, I'm still, still green on the trade. Let's reshort. Um, and so I did end up reshorting at a different broker. So here are my trades on this one. I called it a rebuttal <laughs> to give myself a second chance. Um, immediately reshorted, held red, and then covered into these dips here, covered into new low day, and I was all out. So between the initial cover and then the squeeze, and then the reshort, and then the cover into the new low day, um, I did lock in about, what is it, 13K. So really great start to um, the 1st of December. As we see this right here, I guess 14 grand, there it is. Um, so really good start. Um, and that's just one, right? That's just one trade that I happened to, I mean, even then I screwed up. Like I, again, like I said, I covered right into, right into red green to only see it fail. The good part, best part is that I'd reshorted. If I hadn't reshorted, I mean, I would have only made like 5k. I think I made 5k here and then 7k or, or 8k here. Um, so again, still made a mistake, still recovered and ended up with a, a five figure win to start off the month really, really well. Um, the next big, big play was Rivian. Now, Rivian was a really good big winner for me in November because it was just a you know an IPO that went absolutely insane, being extremely overvalued. Um, awesome, awesome few red days. But even then, even even now being or even when it was trading around just above hundred dollars, just from an evaluation standpoint, um, to put this in perspective, Rivian is an electric vehicle company. Um, many many people see EV companies as like the hot new thing because they don't want to miss Tesla. 
you know, if you were around when Tesla Q, the rumors of Tesla Q being a thing, everyone thought, everyone thought Tesla was going uh, bankrupt. Everyone thought Tesla wasn't going to become what it is today. And then you proceed to watch Tesla. I mean, I mean, almost have like a two or 3000% return from those, those lows or from that Tesla Q rumor. So that pretty much is like total like statement of like electric vehicles of the future. Like just a total slap in the face to anyone who didn't think Tesla was legit um, and just came out and just said, you were dead wrong. So now there's this, there's this constant like FOMO among this crowd of investors that like will see a new electric vehicle company and buy it at any price they can because they don't want to miss the next Tesla. Um, Rivian was 100% this case. Um, even now, it's, it's valued at like the same market valuation as Ford. Ford selling hundreds of thousands of millions of cars a year. Rivian barely having even like a couple hundred cars on the road. They're valued at the same market cap, which is just nuts. And again, I'm not one to be like, it's overvalued. I should swing short it till it goes to the correct valuation. I'm not that kind of trader, right? Um, however, I do recognize that if something is overvalued, you know, over time, the value, the true valuation does show up. And if I can be there for the key inflection points when like sell off, sell off or sell offs happen, um, I'm going to be able to profit and day trade them. So Rivian was one, even after the main major sell off, I was still watching it for have to have like a sub a hundred dollar sell off or a breakdown. Um, in many ways you, I would call this like the number seven, um, fr and the seven step framework, right? Like after the whole supernova was over, everyone kind of stops watching it, but there's still like breakdowns to be had if you want to keep a track of it. So, um, one of the days I was watching, I was actually watching for it to break down this what was it, like a one Oh six double bottom here. I was looking for it to break down one Oh six to potentially then test and maybe even break down on a hundred. It could have had like a really nice breakdown. So on this day on the third was the day I was watching. Um, if we go in, I believe I have it on the intraday here. If not, we'll, we'll do the custom. Um, but again, so I, that was my thesis. Like if this thing could break down 106, we can possibly break down and test a hundred. Um, yeah, this is it right here. And so right out the gate, I don't even remember my trades. That's why I always take pictures. Let me exit out here. Boom, boom, boom. Um, so yeah, so right out the gate, I ended up shorting and you also see me covering. That's probably because it went, it spiked. Yeah, it spiked. And cross red green, I said, nope, we're not gonna, you know, because it could very easily been like a um, a triple bottom or a holding support. So like, if we're gonna hold support and squeeze up, I do not need to be short and 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 just hold, right? So I did cut it. Um, merely we shorted when we were weak and we stayed red. And then next thing you know, we break 106. I'm like, great, this is an awesome um, breakdown, and hopefully we'll test a hundred dollars. So luckily, I did cut a lot of locks them in. Um, did reshorten these bounces. Re took a final add into view app. Um, Started co covering more, thinking it wasn't going to break down. Um, let me get into this out here. And as you can see here, I start getting all like antsy. Clearly, I've already covered, but I clearly think it's going to break down 100. So I keep like trying to reshort, cover, reshort, cover, reshort, cover. And finally, I, I just I just throw in the towel. I'm like, Kyle, you're 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 playing too many mental games with yourself. Um, at this point, if it breaks down a hundred, you're just going to miss it. Like you, you took the meat of the move, you know, you took it from 110 to, to 103 or one one two, one two, whatever it was, just accept that and move forward. And that's what I did. Um, and again, in hindsight, it was the right decision. It ended up actually holding hundred. So I wouldn't even have, you know, made money on that breakdown. Um, and that was that. So even, even after screwing or even after, you know, going back and forth like four or five times here, um, the main meat of the move made me about like what, 12 grand. So again, on the third, the first and the third immediately started to a great month of, of 26 grand. Um, again, like I said, just, just better setups and setups I knew and recognized very well. And again, both of them, I screwed up, not once I screwed up, but both of them being AER, a, um, ERC covering into red green, same thing here. First initial trade was a loss, right? And I had to kind of rebuttal and uh, reshort till to ultimately make 12 grand. So isn't perfect by any means, but turned out to be work really, really well. Um, the next big, big win wasn't till the 14th. Um, and it actually was bigger than this day. And I'll, and I'll say, say why, but, um, it was BLFE here. So BLFE is a, um, very, very traditional, um, promotion stock. Um, if you don't know what I'm talking about, um, go back and I'll even link it here. Go back and watch my very first, like very first YouTube video. Um, I go over this setup. It, it's incredible to me that these, these are still happening. I mean, they've been happening for decades, so I'm not surprised, but um, that I'm even still trading them. Like I really thought I, over time I would have stopped trading them. Um, they still come around and I still make money on them. So we're going to keep doing it. So I actually did make money on BLFE um, during this wave when it, when it pumped up. And then I remember getting short into this bounce and then covering into this washout near $1. Um, did a bounce again. I don't think I reshorted this, but then you can see it fades all the way back down to, to Pennyland down as low as like 30 cents or so. 
Um, didn't watch it, didn't really care about it until I saw it kind of pumping up again. And so when I see it pump again and I see it going, you know, into two bucks, which is really kind of near like previous resistance, um, you know, most times pumps don't, pumps don't really, or promotions don't really go over their previous highs. Like each pump is like kind of weaker in a way. So when I saw it at two bucks, I'm thinking like, again, I take a very wide risk approach on these. Um, again, go watch that first video to, to see how I do it. But um, I saw this, and I'm like, okay, yeah, this is gonna this is gonna sell off. Like this is gonna do exactly what all these have done. Like I have odds on this. I've traded these for years. I know how these work. Um, so got short into this, this huge green day. Um, I believe it added some on the red day, shorted some more into this bounce. Um, kind of almost like, it was like almost like a number six in a way, a small number six, and then it just collapsed. And again, I take a very patient approach on this. I'm happily willing to swing these for weeks, if not months. Um, my goal was to cover around 50 cents. I ended up getting extremely um, lucky on the timing and having the low be like 49 cents. So if you look at my covers here, um, I just did the daily chart to make it easier, but like, I mean, I literally covered it like 51, 50, 52 cents. Just totally, um, really, you know, I'm not one, I don't like to predict. I rather react and cover into weakness. Um, but with pump and dumps and with promotions, I generally do like to be patient and, and kind of get the price I want. And I got pretty, again, a good timing that 50 cents was around the bottom this time. Um, and I avoided this, this, this bounce back. So, and again, if history is any of a guide, this bounce will probably be similar to like this bounce or this bounce, right? It might just, you know, in, in three, six months time, I guarantee you, um, maybe not guarantee, but like 95% chance this stock is going to be back down to 50 cents. So, um, but anyway, so from shorting from in the, in the high ones covering at 50 cents, I'm, I total in total, I made like 32 grand. Um, this day I only ended up making 23 again cause I did end up selling some longer term, um, trade thesis that weren't working out. And again, towards the end of the year, like people do tax loss selling. And I thought to myself, like if, if I'm going to stop out on these trades, these longer term swing ideas, um, it's better to do it now than in the new year. So that's what I did. I decided to, while, while being green in the day, while having a cushion, let's sell off some losers. I sold off like four or five swings I had ended up being like nine cane losses or 10 cane losses. So it went from like 32, 33 grand, 23 grand in the day. Um, but ultimately from BLFE alone, it was 32 grand. So that was really awesome. Um, and then, so the, the last trade, the last big winner was on the 27th. Um, this was one of the swing trades that actually worked, right? So some of these swing trades I was taking were like on hot sectors, whether it be like esports or crypto or, um, or weed. Like I was trying to pick certain plays that were part of a hot sector and I would just swing them until the sector kind of blew up. Now, some of the, some of the, most of them were being crypto. The crypto ones, a lot of them didn't work out, right? A lot of them, unfortunately, December was actually a, quite a harsh month for crypto rather than being a, a very hot month like it has in previous um, cycles, but that's okay. AEBB being a crypto company or crypto stock actually worked out anyway. Um, and so what my thesis was is that back when crypto was super hot in um, earlier the 2021, you know, this had a huge run from practically almost sub penny levels to 70 cents here, had another huge bounce to 60 cents here. And then we consolidated in this like 10, 10, 11 cent area for months. And so, and I knew the reason why it ran here is because they were saying like, we're going to have, we're going to make a cryptocurrency wallet. We're going to make a cryptocurrency exchange and it's coming out. Right. So from a, from a longer term swing perspective, you know, you kind of have to have the stock has to have like this story. And I knew it had the story. I knew it had the product, the, the cryptocurrency currency exchange that would come out. I knew it was heavily tied to crypto. So any, any pop in crypto, any hot sector in crypto or any announcement of this company coming out with their, their exchange, um, this was going to run again. So I started buying, um, I think back in, I think as early as August and then added a little bit more, I believe in September, October, um, you do see this dip here where it actually broke support. Um, I had no interest in cutting it. Again, when I take, when I personally take these smaller swings, I'm willing to risk 50%, if not zero, like I'm just put, I'm willing to put in a much smaller, smaller position or dollar size. And I don't even, I don't like watching it. The only way I can swing is if I don't watch a stock. I mean, really, um, um, I just, I know where my risk is and until it's there, um, I don't even bother. So it did dip here. It didn't phase me. And then what do you know? That was kind of like a shakeout for the stock just run huge. Um, forget why it ran here, but again, it's, it was, it, as always, this is always a crypto related news release. Um, I remember selling a fourth into the twenties here, um, held my, my, the third of my position left. Again, I literally watched it go from high twenties all the way down to 12 or 13. Again, I wasn't, the only way I can swing, like I said, is I barely watch it and I only sell into strength. So throughout this whole time, yes, I did watch unrealized gains go back, but again, I, I stayed true to like the thesis of 
when the exchange comes out or when crypto is hot again, this is going to go back to new highs. I, you know, I did think it was going to go back to more like 40 or 50. Um, turns out it didn't. It only went to 30. But that's still okay. Um, come the 28th of December was when their, their crypto exchange was going to release. So on the 27th, of course, it, it has its kind of huge run up. Um, if we go to my trades here, let me exit out here. Um, this was an overnight trade. So I had technically two trades on this. I had the swing trade that I plan on selling into the news release, like buy the rumor, sell the news. But also I also day trade these things. Like even if I wasn't in a swing position, the news around the, their crypto exchange being released on the 28th, again, still a buy and sell the rumor situation. And I still day trade those or at least um, overnight those. So that's what I did. Um, two accounts. I had one already had one in my long-term swing account from, from 12 cents, um, which was my average. And then during the 26th into the 27th, um, I started longing, um, I guess, on this new high day over 27, added right to the close, and then sold all the way up into the spike into the low 30s. And then once it broke down here, um, sold the rest and made about 8K on on this kind of, I guess, day trade or overnight trade. Um, and then on the swing trade, my entries were not as, or my exits were not as great. I ended up having to sell it a little bit lower, maybe like at 30 bu or 30 cents, because um, again, just with my swing trade, I'm more, more um, giving, maybe wider risk, right? I'm willing to try to see if it can run. But once it started selling up this hard into the sell the news event, I'm like, okay, this is the sell off. Like I need to get out. Um, so I sold the rest of my shares, locking in, I think 12 grand on that. So between 12 grand and then actually, so then sorry, it's 12 grand on just those sells. And then between the sell off, the fourth that I sold in the twenties, you know, two months prior, added all up, it was like 13 grand or so. So 13 plus eight, like 21, 22 grand or so. Um, and I mean, this thing just, collapse so much harder than I thought. I mean, it, it was a perfect sell the news event. Um, you know, if I, if I had wasn't, if I didn't know what sell the news, uh, sell the news event was, I'd be so confused as to why this thing went from 30 to, to 15 cents in a matter of three days or two days, really. Um, so couldn't have been better. Couldn't have timed it better to sell into the thirties, um, and save myself 50%, 50% just 50% sell off. Um, fortunately I did not short it. I didn't think it was going to sell off this much. I really only thought it was going to sell off to maybe the mid twenties at best. Um, but that's okay. It happens. Um, I'm more than happy to have nailed the long side on it. Um, but yeah, so that's what Colt created this 22 grand day. And like I said, between 13 grand on EAERC, 12 grand on Rivian, um, 32 K at BLFE, AABB 22 grand, like that's, that's like 80 grand around. And I made 82 grand on the month. I mean, that's not, that's what I mean. Like less is more. These four trades made my month. Um, just kind of crazy. Um, but again, it happens. Like that's how efficient trading is done. Um, now it doesn't have to be that way. You can. There's plenty of months where I've made money every significant money every day, and it led to some of the, my best months this year. But again, that's in a hot market. That's in a market where you're getting really hot, great opportunities every day or every other day. December was not like that. I mean, really, it was like one a week essentially. Like I, I luckily I was luckily had two in one week on the first week, but then it was nothing the second week, one the third week, definitely nothing the the fourth week, and then one the fifth week. So. They're sporadic, they happen here and there, um, but you gotta take advantage of them when they're there. Now, something, little disclaimer I wanna say about this though is that, you know, I'm five and a half years in. Like I mentioned before, I went over these these, these four plays, they were they were all different setups, right? Swing, swing short, swing long, um, <laughs> you know, overnight short, um, breakdown short, like they're just all like you know, number seven, like I said with Rivian, um, they're all different. And if you're like only one, two, maybe even three years in, you're like, I can do that. Yes, but I wasn't doing that year one, year two, year three, right? I'm five and a half years in now. Um, and it's taken me that long to cultivate this portfolio or this strategy of multiple setups, right? Because and, and the reason why I'm making this point is because I got so many DMs and so many people reaching out to me this month about like this month being tougher. They're like, I'm losing money. I'm not sure what I'm doing wrong. My setups aren't working anymore. Um, and they might only have one or two setups. And that's okay. Like that's a good thing, right? Like the people, the many new traders I see trying to learn like four, five, six setups at a time lose money. So you either, you either can lose money on trying to learn six setups or you can lose money on trying to learn two setups that you made money in the past, but it's just not a good market for them right now. Um, and this certainly the case was for me back in like 2018, 2019. Um, during those periods, I only knew or was making money on like two, three, maybe four setups at the max. Um, it really was two at the most, which was for shorting first red days and um, OTC panic dip buys. Besides those two, I mean, those were really the money makers. And, and 
specifically I can remember 2019, um, there was like a four or five month stretch where like very similar to December where like I got maybe two red days and two dip buys for the whole month. And that was my month. I mean, that was really it. Um, and, and again, it was only two setups. So if, if you're like that and you only have a couple setups or only have one setup and it's not showing up or you're not trading them as well, like, yes, you want to adapt and grow and get better, but don't beat yourself up and then see someone like me who's been around here this long, seeing him making money on every setup. He seems like every setup he touches, which is not true. Again, I just, again, it's experience. It's, it's the point that I've gotten to this point and I know how to identify the six to eight setups that I know how to trade and they happen to have showed up in December, right? Again, if I only had two setups, um, yeah, I probably would have, the only one I would have maybe nailed was like Rivian because that was like a, a red day short. Um, everything else, you know, took, took again, year, year four, year five to learn and, and make those money from those setups. Um, so I just want to make that clear. Um, you know, that's why I'm able to pull out a grant a month, like 80 grand in such a month like a December. Um, if you're not here yet, it's, it's okay. It's a, you, if you're not here yet, believe me, the point is I'm, I've been there. I've been to the months where OT like in 2019, the panic dip buys were practically non-existent. They really weren't. They did not exist. I thought they were gone. Um, maybe one showed up a month, if that. Um, and it just, I, and they came back, right? The market changed. The market shifted. The market through went through its cycles, and panic dip buys came back. And panic dip buys were one of the setups I, I crossed over a million dollars in trading profits with back earlier in this year. Um, so they do come back. You just have to stay patient. You have to stay, um, you know, practice mis risk management. Um, don't try over trading, trying to f make something happen, um, adapt. Yes. And learn, but just don't go from only having one or two setups. to trying to learn five new setups because the market is changing. You're not making the same money, right? Take it, take a very, um, conscious and deliberate approach to better yourself, but don't just balls to the walls. Like, Oh, I saw Kyle make money on every setup he touched, which again, isn't true. Um, I should do that too. It takes time. It takes a lot of time. Um, and again, even like I said, with the risk management, like I, I, yes, those four setups I just went over made me that money. But like I said, the, I just, there was, there was like, there's like this subconscious, like feeling I get that, that I, I immediately recognize in the market. I'm like, I need to size down. Like this market isn't it. This is not the kind of Decembers we see before we've seen before. Um, and that's kind of how I got to, to having such a small average loss and then such a small loss being overall on the month. Um, and as you can see here, like 21% loss, that's because of those swing trades. Like those, again, those, those few sector swings that I mentioned, um, again, I lost on the, on the ones I took a loss on, I lost 40, 50, 60, 70% because they were just down so much. And I, they, at some point I got to take, take a loss on them. Um, and now was the time to do that. Again, like AABB, I made 140% like or 130% on that swing from 12 to like 30. Um, so that's why you see also my average gain being just as big at 21.49. It's kind of weird how that they end up being the same, but that's just how the uh, the stats came out. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much December. Um, like I said, not the December we expected. Um, in many ways, again, the best word I can think is uneventful. Um, and at least, you know, again, you could say not for me because I did turn out okay. But again, just as all the people reached out to me, all the people have explained and expressed their frustrations with this market. Um, many of them felt frustrated and uneventful and not what we typically see, which again, so if you're feeling that, that is completely fine. You're not alone. Um, a lot of people are experiencing that. Anyway, um, on to 2021. Um, just as, as a 12 month rolling period of the whole year, just crazy. Um, you know, uh, trading as long as I had, I had, my goal was to cross a million dollars trading profits was to become a, a multi-million dollar trader. Um, but to, to make multi-millions as quick as I have, not multi-millions, but two is multi technically, whatever to make over 2 million this year, um, really blew away what I thought was possible. And even then, even like me making 2 million, which is awesome. There are other traders who have made way more. So I'm not even, I'm not even, not, I don't even say that to make as a comparison. I say that just to show you the levels, um, of, of just opportunity that's out there. And it's, it's crazy if you can just stick with it and get to this point. Cause, um, it's, it's incredible. Um, so some of the stats I immediately recognized was something like, and this happened every year. So my five biggest wins first two, first two and only two hundred or six figure wins. Uh, and then three wins on AMC back in, I think it was June or whatever it was, but, um, 
every every year my previous big wins have always been big even my my lowest my fifth biggest win has been bigger than my biggest win the year prior so 2020 biggest win was 35 grand lowest biggest win or fifth biggest win was 54. if you look at like 2020 to 2019 lowest win was 16 grand biggest win in 2019 was six so like just there's that there's that trend that i see that has happened this year as well like each year i've progressively gotten bigger um in a great way that it's like makes the previous year statistically look just kind of silly um but it isn't like that's 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 how i was trading real time that's what led me to this point um same thing with losses like my my um you know with bigger wins come bigger losses so even my smallest biggest loss of abml uh you know was still bigger than my biggest loss of 2020. same thing here abml being three grand here it's funny that abml was twice on the list i guess i don't like that ticker a ticker doesn't like me um was still bigger than even my biggest loss in 2019 right so there's that trend going along um it's kind of encouraging to see we'll see how 22 plays out if if i mean that would be insane if if my uh my five biggest wins in 2022 will all be over 100 grand or 110 grand um but if if history is any guide then that's absolutely a possibility um another thing i want to mention is that the perspective of how your how the longer their time frame gets the better your trading should be because you're getting your you're giving yourself a a bigger sample size a bigger time and window to have your edge play out in the market and my stats here certainly show that so if you look at your, my two worst red days just days was february 11th uh that was the day i took this huge loss of mmnff so that day ended up negative 47 grand uh recently in november i had a negative 37 grand day but if then you go to the worst weeks my worst week is 30, 34 grand and nine grand. So my two worst days are bigger than my two worst weeks. That's because again, you, you look at only one day and then you look at a five day rolling period, which is a week. My edge is playing out over a longer period of time. So yes, I may have lost big on these two particular, two particular days, but the other four days of the week allowed my edge to play out and have make me pull out money for the market to ultimately make those weeks smaller. And, and, and of course, the week of February 11th wasn't even a red week. It was a massive green week because that, that was like the peak of how hot the market could have gotten in that in that time frame. Um, but you can see how just the point is, you know, red days are bigger than the red weeks. And then all of a sudden you look at the two worst months. They're not even they're not even like two worst months isn't a great way to put it because I was green. Right. It went from huge red days, smaller red weeks to then only green months. Um, you know, that's crazy. So like besides August, every other month of the year was over 60 grand because November was 61 grand. So that means every other month was above 61 grand um, besides August, right? Like that's just crazy. Like that's just the, when you, when I, when I reflect on that, it literally, it really makes me um, understand the, the system and the strategy that I've built plays out much, much better than bigger the time frame gets. And that's generally and should be true for everyone's strategy and setup. So if so if you find yourself like the more you trade, the bigger your losses get or the worse your lose streak gets or the the, only thing, the more you trade, the worse your month gets or the worse your week gets, you're doing something wrong, right? Your edge playing out over longer periods of time should ultimately lead you to at least better looking stats and bigger profits, right? So um, in terms of like risk reward, um, average loss in the year is three grand, average win is 4,400. That's not the best I would have liked if this was closer to six grand. At least that would be a two to one risk reward. This is almost like a one, 1. 1.8 to one. Um, but it's okay. You know, at the end of the day, my average win is bigger than my average loss. That's really all I can ask for. Um, average win percent to average loss percent is better. This is, this is very much closer to two to one. Um, this is just cents per share. It doesn't mean much, but it's nice to know I only lose 50 cents per loss and make about a dollar and a half out on average. Um, average week, 40 grand. That's you know, super freaking awesome. Uh, average month, 170 to come out to over 2 million on the year. Um, just under 300% return, which is actually pretty close um, to my average. Um, 2020 was an insane year, like 570 is by far my best month year. But um, 2018, 200%. Um, 2018, 280, which is much closer to this year. And then 2017 is only 100. But if I aver I've averaged all these years out, years out on a different uh, uh, tab in my, my, my sheet here. And um, 
my I guess career average over the five and a half years, it is close to like high 200s percents. So this this year is, is as crazy as it is P and L wise in terms of percentage wise, it actually is a pretty average year in terms of percent return, um, which is kind of nuts because if if I if I just have another average year um, return in terms of percent um, with the capital I have now. Um, 2023 could beat 2021 or 2022 could beat 2021. Um, we'll see something, um, that I think I wouldn't say worried about that. I'm taking a mental note of though is December was different, right? Like I said, December in many ways is usually a precursor or a, a warm up or a pregame to the hottest months of the year, you know, January, February, and like half of March, this December was not that. So I'm, I am cautious and or preparing myself for these next months to not be what they used to be. Now they could be like, again, the market can do anything it wants at any given time. Things could change immediately overnight and we might get the hottest months of the year. Um, but I can just go only go off what I've experienced so far. And because December wasn't as hot as we all expected it to be or what it's been in the past, I'm not going to go into 2022 expecting January, February to be like some amazing grand thing. Um, if it is great, if it isn't great, um, really going in with no expectations and just adjusting, really just viewing the market as it goes. It's really the best way to do it. Um, you know, and th- one thing I will note though, is that in December, a lot of people were talking about tax loss selling. I mean, even I even did it. Like, like I said, I was selling those, those swing trades. Technically you can call that tax loss selling. Um, I know a lot of people talked about it. Uh, I know a lot of people asked me questions about it. So I think as a general trend, a lot of that happened this year. Um, and usually that leads to the January effect. If you don't know what the January effect is, um, it's essentially when people do a lot of tax loss selling in December and because the this January is the new year, they can kind of, after 30 days, they can rebuy the stock they sold, um, and still own it, but then use that loss they took on the previous year as like to save money in taxes. So, um, and because if a lot of people do that, all the stocks that have been beaten down will end up start running like and go supernova because all these people are just rebuying the stocks they sold. Um, is that going to happen? Maybe, maybe not. But again, that is a seasonality thing that has happened in the past. So could January effect be a thing in January? Absolutely. That's certainly a possibility. I'll be watching for that. Um, you know, in terms of, of, you know, why I think 2021 was such a great year was also very similar to December where when I saw an opportunity that was going to, that I felt like, or, or I thought the statistical odds of me making more money were higher. Um, I took bigger risks, right? Like, like fun and W and E W here to make six figures. Like, yeah, I was taking multi hundred, multi six figure dollar position sizes. Do I do that in every play? Absolutely not. But do I do it when I think there's a setup that's a, a, pl- a plus, 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 plus. Yes. Um, same thing with AMC. Like, I mean, there's a reason why these three trades are all AMC because I, it was such a hot market back in June around AMC and GME and, and, and BB and, um, um, BBBY. Like, again, the five and a half years up to this point, I've gotten very good at acknowledging when my A plus setups show up and pushing myself. So, so I think in a way for me to have 2022 be better than my 2021, I need to, I think I need to continue to progress in that direction. Um, that doesn't mean I'm going to stop trading every day. Like I said, you still kind of have to kind of show up every day and, and take the trades that end up don't working out to, to do end up taking the trades that do work out. Um, but in many ways, I want to keep pushing myself in terms of when I get an AA plus setup, I am genuinely willing to willing to risk much, much more um, because I know the odds are much, much more in my favor. Because if I want to beat, if I want to be aggressive and kind of be competitive with myself and kind of beat myself for 2022 and, and try to beat 22 million, um, you know, I do need to push it when there are these opportunities, when I get these, these hot, hot A plus runners that only happen maybe, you know, anywhere from three to six times a year, maybe once a month, if we have a hot market, like we did in like 2020 or early 2021. Um, you know, I'm rambling on, but the point is like, I I definitely want to keep progressing in that direction of really pushing it when we get those A plus setups, um, then sizing down and taking standard average size for just the regular, you know, single trades. And then again, really sizing down when we are in a more, a more tougher market or a more choppier market or just setups that aren't ideal. Um, if not taking them at all. So hopefully that, that I went, hopefully you guys learned a lot. Um, you know, we're at like, what is this 40 minutes now? Um, but yeah, guys, I mean, just to close it out, 2021 has been such an awesome year. I'm excited for 2022. Um, if you weren't profitable in 2021, that's okay. That's, this is now your opportunity to to turn that around. Um, and even if you were made, did make money, like, again, it's just constant progression. It's constant improvement. Um, whether that mean money wise or process wise or mindset wise, like just 
always be improving. Um, I would not be here if I didn't think that way and didn't move that way. Um, so thanks for watching, guys. Um, cheers to 20. Cheers to the new year. And I will, uh, I'll see you guys um, next month or whenever I make another video. <laughs> All right. See you guys.